I'm a tone chaser. That thing you hear in your head that you just can't quite get. Dance the night away? Yeah, there you go. Uh, ended up completely different than I, I imagined it in my mind. <laughs> you know, when, when you're writing a piece of music and then uh, other people get involved, it turns into something else. And uh, didn't it all turn out the way I wanted it to be? Mm -hmm. That's kind of a, I don't know, almost a, uh, a Latin flavor to it that I don't dig. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's still a nice song. You know, it's a pop tune, but uh, I, I envisioned it very different in my head. Hmm. There you go. So we're on uh, Van Halen 2 now. Yep. Um, and I don't think Eddie was a big fan of this song. I've heard him say that. He wasn't, uh, he didn't feel like it was more of a, a poppy song and he wasn't, yeah. you know. And I, and I understand that, uh, in fact, that it was all quite a bit more complicated when he first written, had written it. The riff had quite a bit more to it. And Ted had him, I won't say, I don't think he said dumbing it down, but he did say simplify it. So we did do that. I actually have about five versions of it as they were working through it. And I'll just play uh, this real quick so you can hear it. You'll see that it's, take one. I wouldn't say it's more complex in this particular, this is in the studio, that was take one, that was Ted's voice. But you can hear them, uh, it's, it starts out as it's recorded, but there's an extra uh, part in between the bridge and the chorus. It's like a, take a little second to get to it. But then when he was doing an interview with you, there was even a more complicated piece that he had that uh, sounded really awesome to me. The yeah. guitar player, I'm like, man, why did you get rid of that? Yeah. I'm sure Ted had his hand in, in helping Absolutely. Out. That's that's what Ted would have been masterful. Yeah. Understanding song structure and, and parts like that. Um, and that's that's a song where I famously made the comment um, in the book. Um, when, he, when he told me, you know, dance the night away, I go, oh yeah, Cream had that same oh, yeah. time. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was so amazing is he didn't know the Cream song. Yeah. How I do you not know the Cream huge song? Clapton Cream fan. From Disraeli Gears. How do you, that's the kind of stuff that blew me away. And the other moment was, you know, I, I I have a lot of pictures on my wall. Yeah. You know, me and uh, I've other seen people. Those pictures. <laughs> Garrett was at my place, and, and and he saw those photos, and um, he points to one picture. He goes, "Oh, that's Richie Blackmore." I go, "No, that's Jack Bruce, you moron." <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't. I've never would have said that to him. <laughs> but not to recognize Jack Bruce. Yeah. And to confuse him for Richie Blackmore, right. it's like I'm on candid camera. This cannot be happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I'm going to play a little bit of the riff then. Unbelievable. If it was in tune, it would even sound a lot better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did want everybody to know that um, this is actually my guitar that Derek is playing. So you can see I have one as well. So he's holding mine and I'm holding yours. Exactly. Yeah. I did want to mention that, that Mike Tempesta, yeah. who is artist relations for uh, EVH guitars, um, uh, Charvel and Fender, very, very generously sent this guitar to me. I sent him some books and I think he actually got some books out to his, uh, some of the endorsees, endorsers, and he kindly sent nice. me this guitar, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and it's a it's a great playing guitar. It really yeah. is. And and as horrible guitar players I am, yes. it, the more you play the guitar, the the more I suppose that's the way with any guitar. But really with this one, yeah. Because Ed's guitars, and I played some of those guitars. The yeah. Guitars, I thought they played horribly. I mean, I, they they you had to wrestle with them. It was right. not like you were picking up a a guitar with a you know low action and yeah. thin necks. Anyway, it wasn't like a Paul Reed Smith. Or exactly. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We're on women and children first. Yeah. Um, and the qu and the cradle will rock. Uh, that. Oh man, that was hilarious. Uh, I'm playing an, an old Wurlitzer electric piano through a stack of Marshalls. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a flanger, an MXR flanger, and I'm just pounding on it. And Al and I were in Dave's basement for two weeks, every day, just playing that. Don't do bum 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 bum. 
We were just fucking having a gas laying it. The thing is, I didn't know where to go from there. <laughs> so we played that and played that, I swear, for about two weeks every fucking day. And finally, that chord came. Hmm. You know? And then, then, then it just, you know, it, it just came. It all came together. Hmm. Interesting. You know, the, the, the chord, you know, the uh, all the changes, the verse. Right. The breakdown, the whole section, you know, all, all the pieces all of a sudden. After just pounding on it, <laughs> it came together. I kind of saw the first two records as kind of like, you know, the Mach 1 version of Van Halen. With Women and Children first, I thought, you know, things were, were expanding, tones were, yeah. were changing. Would you agree? I would agree. And the interesting thing is I have several recordings of, of the Van Halen 2 tour. And you can hear these things being worked up. Oh. You can hear everybody wants some being worked up. You can hear fools being worked up. Uh, so on the road, they are coming up with these ideas and then formulating them finally into songs when they get back. That's cool. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I think Edward, even as a writer, was, um, he was becoming a better writer. I think he was, you know, what he was hearing, I think he was more able to translate, you know, onto tape and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know, whenever I would make those kind of comments to him, he'd go, man, nah, I'm not maturing, it's not getting like that, you know, it's just different or something. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he hated those kinds of observations, but, I mean, you know. Um, well, I, you know, I thought it was interesting is he would bring something new, especially in the first six albums, he would bring something new that we've nobody's ever heard before. Yeah. And in this case, uh, playing that Wurlitzer through yeah. a Marshall, Nobody had done Nobody that. Ever and you're that. there, like, what is that? Unbelievable. So when we have to play it live, we don't we don't have a Wurlitzer through a Marshall. We have to go. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's very cool. Um, Unchained, we've now jumped to, to the record that a lot of people claim to be the favorite records. Fair warning. A lot of guitar players. A lot of guitar players, that's true. Um, what was I thinking? Don't have a clue. Don't remember. Okay. It's not much memory. So the, 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 the whole album, Fair Warning, was kind of a dark period. Mm -hmm. Uh. I don't know whether it was anger or whatever, but I ended up doing 90% of the guitar stuff at 4 o'clock in the morning with Don Landy. Mm. Uh, I think we were all doing too much blow at the time, mm -hmm. and nothing was really being done during the day. Nothing was happening, so I would go back down at night and do it. It's aggressive. It's very guitar-oriented. It's uh, The tone is definitely darker. Amazing guitar And sounds. I mean, that was like, yeah. God. Yeah. You know, and, and again, referencing the book, uh, and I can't remember which solo it was, um, I, I uh, sort of uh, defined it as, a, you know, an angry solo. Were you an angry young man that day? Edward? Yeah. And he'd laugh. He'd, he'd like that um, yeah. observation, you know. I wonder no? which solo uh, you were referring to. A lot of people think the Mean Street solo is, is... Could have been Mean Street. And I know that, like, Dimebag Daryl's favorite. Yeah. Mentioned well, I mean, mean uh, we could probably pull out the book here and, and, and look, but I'm kidding. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it, that could have very well been it. Yeah. Um, yeah, his playing was just amazing. And, again, you know, he had more time. Yeah. Right? Uh, a whole whole lot more yeah. guitar orchestration happening. And the first uh, time he introduces having detuned uh, songs... So is it really? the one that's on that, uh, the interview that we're, we're going after is Unchained is Detuned. Uh, Hear About It Later is Detuned. Uh, maybe another one on there. Uh, Sinner Sweet. So all this detuning going on, which makes it sound darker anyway. Yeah, absolutely. So play a little bit of Unchained. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Yeah, he does his rhythm stuff. You know, we talked about it before, but everything he did, yeah, swung man. Yeah, yeah you can just hear it in this part right here. That and that, 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 exactly. that, exactly. That is so unbelievable, man. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Listen, thank you so much for checking out the uh, video. I hope you're digging it. Uh, more to come. And uh, yeah, uh, I can see by the views that um, a lot of people were, were, were checking in on it. And that is so cool. For those of you who don't have the book, if you dug the video and, you know, you want to learn more about Edward and my 26 years hanging out with him, you know, please, uh, please check out the book. You can uh, buy the book uh, on my newly created website, which is very cool. Bunch of cool pictures up there for you. The address is ToneChaserBook.com. ToneChaserBook.com. Pretty simple. So just go there and uh, you can pre-order. Uh, Pre-orders because I sold out of the first edition. And the second edition copies will be arriving in about six weeks. We'll call it uh, mid-May to late May. So yeah, that's about it. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, that means a lot. That helps me put these together and, uh, you know, uh, creating cool content for all you guys. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's about it. So again, thanks for checking my stuff out. Uh, go check out my book. I know you'll dig it. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.